Welcome to the Connection podcast series. We are sitting down with Mike Introner of MI Associates and here we are on our fourth session. Um, today, Mike and I are going to be looking at the issues surrounding waste and waste management within uh, the corrugated ball plants and sheet plants. Um, Mike, welcome. Thanks uh, for joining us again. Um, obviously, well done. Big in the news at the moment, obviously, is is the dreaded paper price increases. Um, so, you know, the recording of this session is very timely. Um, in January, European and uh, UK box plants saw uh, anywhere from 30 to 40 euros a tonne increase on their paper prices. Uh, speculation is that in February it's going to go again, mm -hmm. uh, which is quite unusual um, for, for, you know, the new year. But, um, Mike, let's look at the ramifications that that's having, because obviously we're seeing it also even in the national press uh, people talking about um, you know uh, long lead times on supply of boxes uh, Amazon is getting blamed for stealing all the corrugated <laughs> <laughs> so Mike what what um, what can uh, ball plants and box plants be uh, doing to sort of mitigate some of these uh, awful increases that are taking place at the moment okay well yeah I think you just about covered it all there Dan it, it's been a bit of a Double kicking the teeth, hasn't it, for for, for many in the, in the uh, corrugated industry? So you've you've got not just the January and February increases that I'm told are there. Um, there's even talk of them trying to push another one in the next couple of months. Uh, white papers going up in in March, and and then there's the the con contraction, if you like, of the supply chain, where as you say, all the online retailers are getting blamed for for taking all the uh, corrugated. And I'm sure that they'll blame us for uh, keep buying things online, but that's what it is. Um, I think that there are a number of areas where I've always found opportunities in business. And, and, and clearly waste is one. Waste, whether that's the manufacturing waste or, or, or waste in other areas of the business. And um, I think the key thing is, is as a, as a smaller business or sheet plant, if you can save on your paper save on waste then you're creating opportunity to effectively get some more orders out which uh, given the um the, the lead times that some people are seeing and we're talking weeks not days and many weeks in some cases and, and that's sometimes just to get the paper in let alone get the orders out to customers um but yeah and i think i would potentially start right at the big right at the two ends of the process if you like not just necessarily what are we doing when we're manufacturing but um, you've got your incoming paper supply and how much of that are you losing before you even get it on a corrugator or your incoming board supply how much of that are you losing before you even start putting it through a converting machine either through uh, poor storage storage locations things getting wet things getting damaged um, product getting damaged paper reels um, board getting damaged before it gets onto the machines um, the way that they're transported to machines are we damaging things with trucks are we damaged them damage them with poor pallets or, 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 or conveyors and then at the other end of the, the business obviously you've got your warehousing and it's sometimes frightening going into some businesses and walking around and just saying why have we got so much of this or why have we got so much of that and in, in, in one business that I was in not too long ago which was a pretty forward thinking business pretty well automated with every system imaginable available to them they weren't even doing a weekly stock check and just you know getting that up to customer service so that um, the uh, the boys and girls in customer services could just double check the customers to make sure that you know can you either take this and take it to Fazan so we create some space and, and, and get some revenue for it or making sure that we're not duplicating orders for product that we've already got in the warehouse which is f frighteningly repetitive sometimes when you when you go into businesses mm -hmm. um, so th those two areas can um, open up significant opportunity significant opportunity um, then we're Mike, Mike why don't we Mike why don't we start at at, um, at the beginning then in terms of the corrugating process uh, because uh, you and I were chatting offline uh, about some of the work that you did uh, in your your previous life um, where you were just analyzing and looking at um, 
just like the last three or four wraps of a reel, uh, the difference that that can make uh, overall at the end of a year in, in terms of corrugating process. So let, let's start looking at some of the individual nuts and bolts that, that plants can be looking at. Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly in, in one business, which was 150, 160 million um, square meter business, sheet feeder, um, we did an analysis that just explain to the guys that if we could save one wrap per per visit of the reel to the corrugator and on average they were coming to the, a reel would come to the corrugator twice in its life um, and it wasn't untypical to go and find that we were cutting four six eight ten twenty wraps off for, for various reasons either through damage or what I call Geronimo syndrome where we give it a good good um, scalping rather and, and take you know, three, four, five, six layers off when it only needs one or two. If we could say just one wrap per visit, that equated to £27,000 of paper then. If they then sold that paper rather than throwing it away, I think that, that took the number up to closer to £45,000 once you added in the, um, the profit that you would make from, from, from selling, the, uh, selling the product. So that, that was one area. Um, I mean, the, there was a a group within the businesses that I've worked before and some good people that were going around businesses offering help, offering advice on how to reduce waste, particularly from the real stores in to the corrugator. Um, but not always was that, that advice heeded or, or did they always have the people available to, uh, to help implement some of, the, some of the findings. But certainly in a real store, I mean, things like, you know, just having your reels um, too close together and not enough space between them. So reels get damaged by the clamp when we're putting reels in or taking things out. Um, clamps themselves seem, seem you know, a, a relatively modest cost for, for having a, camp, a clamp correctly lined. You know, you, you can be damaging every single reel of paper that you move. And as we just said, you know, if, if you damage just one layer of paper more than you, you need to when you move it, whether you're unloading it off the lorry or putting it in, in its storage location in the real stores or taking it to the, the corrugator, it's £27,000 a year. Or, or even on a modest business, it, you know, it's going to be £20,000 a year that you're throwing away. So when someone turns the nose up at spending, I don't know, three or £4,000 on having a clamp refurbished or, or maybe turn them on having one totally replaced if that's what it's, it's needed, depending on the type of machine. It, it, it's, it's insignificant compared to some of the savings that you can, uh, that you can generate. And, and Mike, the, the, the interesting thing there is uh, also we've got this issue of, you know, legacy box plants versus the more, you know, greenfield modern sites, because, you know, obviously the, the, the ultimate is, as we all move towards Industry 4.0, is, um, you know, the, the robotic uh, solutions, uh, so driverless uh, kind of setups. But um, do, do you think this is where the, the quantum leap is going to take, uh, take place in terms of, you know, those who've invested well in brand new facilities, etc., are going to reap the rewards, aren't they? Because as raw materials become, um, as you say, uh, more expensive, uh, longer lead times, you know, it, it's going to be those incremental gains. It's like Dave Brailsford used to talk about with Sky, you know, with his cycling team. It's, it's all about incremental gains. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think, I think there's two elements to that. If you've got the infrastructure in place where you can do things or, but either in scale or by being able to use automated systems to take some of the human factors out, because you do sometimes come across problems where, you know, some clamp truck drivers have always done it this way. And, and it's, it takes some time in, 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 in bringing people along with you to change the way that they do things. So if, if you've got the space, you've, you've got a uh, purpose-built factory and you, you build all that sort of thing, then that's fantastic. But sometimes you can find that having the space just makes matters worse. And I, I've been in some businesses where you've walked in a real stores and it's not much bigger than my, my lounge. And you, you walk around and think, how are you actually putting 150 million square meters through this business? Because it, it's, it's tiny. And you sometimes come back to, um, you know, uh, what do you call it, 
which is the mother of all invention. Yeah, necessity, that's it, sorry. Uh, necessity is the mother of all invention. And, and when you haven't got the space, you've got to find ways to manage it more effectively. Um, but I do agree with you, there, there are opportunities now uh, that are developing for manless um, and, and automated systems for moving reels, uh, moving board. We see it in, in, in the factories now with robotics being used um, and, man, and manless fork trucks in, in some businesses. I know I went into a, a sheep feeder in um, Germany, 300 million um, square meters turnover and I think that there were like 19 people employed you know dark warehouses and all, and all that sort of thing and that's fantastic if you've got the money to lay that down but sometimes it is just doing some of the simple things right even if you're in a business that, that do, you don't have the ability to either spend money on, on huge capital projects you don't have the space to do it you don't have the space to expand sometimes you just got to think about let's get the basics right so, so Mike, if we um, if we now move from you know the board plant environment, the larger integrated type environment, and start focusing then on you know the the converting department, and therefore we could also you know put in that same category sheet plants. Um, you know the sheet plant owners at the moment are facing um, delivery times on sheet board. Uh, here we are in the first week in February. Um, they're saying that some people are saying it could be th third week in March fourth week of March so you know they're working with six to eight week lead times at the moment and um, so what can the sheet plants be uh, doing to to sort of start you know improving the the sort of the, the lead times etc and um, to, to, to get the board to the customers or the finished boxes to the customers I mean is it basics like looking at machine setups again also storage and, and utilization of materials I think that there's two two elements one is the bigger picture where you've got the integrated uh, companies are they going to start protecting themselves in terms of you know paper supply and making sure that they just look after themselves and and you know does that leave some of the uh, smaller businesses and some of the independents vulnerable to that um, and, and that can be a worry but as with all things, it, it's, a, it's a careful path to tread, isn't it? Because when we come out of the cycle, people remember who, who's let them down and, and, and who hasn't. I think within um, many of the sheet plants, I think if you're talking, let's say, a, a typical £10 million turnover business, then if board costs are 60 to 70% of your business, then you know, you're spending £6 million, £7 million on paper. If, if you're adding in paper, price increases of £50 a tonne, then the knock-on effect is that that's going to put about two and a, take out about 2.5% of your, of your turnover. Now that's what it's going to equate to, you know, in and around 25k, uh, 250k on, on, on board. And then if we look at um, waste in a typical sheet plant, probably being in and around 10%, some be a little bit less, some be a little bit more. I know people will always quote um, the lowest numbers, but I think once you do the um, the analysis financially of, of boarding versus what you um, sell out to customers, then 10% is not not uncommon. Then it, it's a 25% increase just just from a waste point. 25,000 pounds increase just from a waste point of view. I think if you're looking at a converting machine, if we took typically a mini line where I don't know if the average Plank size probably about 0.45 of a square meter is not not untypical. Then you you can then start to look at that being um, if we were looking at one bundle to set up or two bundles to set up to uh, get get an order up and running. Um, it's not untypical for some machines and and in some businesses I've seen where they're taking. 10, 15 minutes to get going. And it's many, many bundles. And a lot of this can often be down to just how the machine's set up. But if you start factoring those things in where, you know, um, three or four bundles is, is what you waste. If you, you can reduce your bundle count in terms of waste by a couple of bundles, then that, that can typically be 5% of your waste. Now your microstops, if, if machines stop on average four, five, six times an hour, an hour, which again is not uncommon, it can very 
easily be another bundle that you're wasting every time you set up rather than a, an odd box. You know, we all talk about one box setting or two box setting, but there aren't that many that, that actually do that, you know, and um, all too often you do see that it, it's considerably bigger numbers. And if, if you're running at those sorts of levels where if you could save, you know, two bundles at set up and half the bundle, you know, reduces downtime by half in terms of microsoft's you could potentially be looking there at about six percent of your waste on a machine so mike is mike is that um is that training or is it maintenance or combination of both i think i think it's a combination of both i mean training more often than not the guys know what what they're doing um sometimes it's just historical this is how we the, the times you go in a, a business and you hear that this is how we've always done it. Um, so there's there's the management of that, management of the training, management of what's expected with people, and and the bringing people along with you. And then of course, yeah, there, there's the asset care surrounding the machine. And and, and I would say that seventy percent of the problem will be just cleaning, keeping it clean, and keeping things right. But you know, if you if you've got a feeder that's not right, then we're talking about um, board registration, board alignment issues, if you've got, you know, whether it's print rolls, analytics rolls, pull rolls through the machine, again, alignment, registration issues, get into your folding section, gluing issues, gap control, uh, and then you get into your, the back end of the machine with the strappers and palletizers, then we're talking about product damage, the aesthetics of the product as it, as it comes out. And, and all these things can be largely dealt with through making sure machines are, are set up right they're clean and they're calibrated on a regular basis you know if it, if it if feeder um, gaps on if it's feed rolls then you know if the gap should be x it's not too hard to check whether it's x just once a week um, and if it's not right planning to get it put right because if not or and if you've got feed wear feed roll wear in the middle as, as you would typically typically get then all that you're going to do is the operators just put more pressure on so then they damage the board so then you lose box performance and then you get returns so it, it's all a vicious circle and if you can improve in those areas not only are you going to save from a waste point of view because you're going to reduce the downtime you're going to uh, hopefully through um, working with your people you know introduce um, one box setting or all those sorts of pit stopping principles get things up and running more quickly get things up and running with less waste then you potentially can be looking at putting about four percent back into your capacity of your business add in the fact now that the machines can run better the guys will be more confident with their machines they'll generally run them more quickly um you know, come back to what we've said before. If, if the guys can see that you're taking them seriously and dealing with the problems and removing the issues for them, then then you're more likely to engage with them, and they'll 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 pay that back. Generally, they'll pay that back in spades. And you know, if if they can then see that you're helping them, they'll help you. As I say, the machines will run for longer. The machines will run with less waste, and that four percent improvement we're talking about could easily be doubled in many, many situations with not a lot of input, no, almost zero capital investment. Yeah, you might have to spend a little bit on um, some of your roles and things like that, but we're not talking significant numbers and these things should, should be done anyway as part of your uh, engineering plan. So, so Mike, in, in the bigger uh, board plants, the integrated type of companies, you know, they're, they're all utilizing the, the sort of, you know, the Kiwi plans of this world that have waste reporting tools uh, where they're able to actually monitor and see where that waste is occurring within uh, the business, whether it's in real stocks, whether it's performance on the corrugator, whether it's in, in the converter. Um, but what, what's your experience, um, you know, more at the sheet plant level? I mean, do you think that a lot of these, these sheet plants are fully, you know, up to speed with analysing where this waste is being created? Um, some people are really good at it. You go around with some businesses that are really good, but whether that's a sheet plant or an integrated, but in, in both categories, I think you can find... You can find that there are people 
and businesses that are not using the information. Some of them have, have, got, have got the systems, have got the tools, yeah, Kiwi and, and, and Vitron and all, and all those, those different systems are great. But not everybody uses them particularly well. Some people just aren't really using them. Some people haven't got the, um, the skills or, or people have left the business that did have the skills and they, they've not been followed up. As I say, I, I've, I've been into businesses before where, where you go in and you, and you look around a warehouse and, and nobody's doing a weekly stock report. It's just... And Mike, if we, um, you know, when we're talking particularly there about stock check, it, it leads on to quite an interesting um, business model that, um, it, you know, not just in the UK, I mean, this is globally as well, that there are some corrugated box plants that... Um, base their business on a sort of stock and serve um so you know literally they're almost gambling aren't they that uh, that, that you know a particular customer is going to require x amount of boxes over the course of a year you know they produce it in longer runs and then they're serving it on a weekly or even a daily basis yeah do you feel that at, at the moment where paper is in tight supply you know sheep feeding is is on eight week lead times i mean do you think being on that sort of just in time delivery that stock and serve do you think that's a bit of a you know sticky uh, sticky area at the moment i think it's difficult for people to maintain that i mean clearly if, if your incoming um, paper supply or board supply is 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 restricted then your ability to do that um Really, it doesn't make sense, does it? Because it, it, if, if I'm going to run uh, twice as much as I need to get, um, because that's what I've always done, because that, that's how we get the efficiencies through the business. But that means I'm going to let the customer down. Then most people are just going to have to start cutting their, their, their order quantities back. But then, of course, you, you run into the, you, you don't get the operational benefits of that. So you've got more startups, you've got more waste, you've, you've got more downtime. So it's even more important that we, we use any opportunities that we can to work at what are the, re, what are the things that can, the, that can help us, which is dealing with your downtime issues, looking at setups and, and trying to get your waste number down. And often as well is just communicating to your workforce what, what you're doing and why you're doing it and explaining to them why order quantities have come down. Because if you explain to them why you're doing it, then you know, you, 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 won't, you won't get the moans and groans that you might normally do. Well, listen, Mike, thank you ever so much indeed. It's been um, great catching up with you on this. I mean, obviously, hot topic. Um, yeah, and, and from you know, the conversation we've just had here, there's an awful lot that can be done that doesn't require you know, tens of thousands of investments. It's literally fine tuning. It's looking at your data, using your systems, talking to your people. Um, and uh, yeah, ho hopefully this, uh, this proves as uh, um, a nice sort of thought provoker for, uh, for the industry. So Mike, thanks ever so much indeed. Uh, great to catch up and we'll look forward to sitting down again soon. Okay, Dan. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.